Hey everybody, I'm just getting a few things set up here. Double checking to make sure that all my slides are ready to go. We'll be starting in about 15 seconds. You can see on the timer there. Let me do just a small audio check. Sounds like things are working. Five seconds. Woohoo! I'm excited. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this English lesson where we're going to talk about the yard. Um I'm not gonna say what the yard is but it has something to do with the outdoors um and if you live in a house but we're gonna talk about things you can do in the yard, things you would use in the yard uh and just a whole English lesson about the yard. Before we get started though, I do wanna say thank you to all of you who are here. It's awesome to have all of you here. Let me just check to make sure things are working. It sounds like things are working well. Excellent. So, anyways, a few things before we get started. First of all, we're gonna do a topic today that might be a little bit uh, uninteresting for some people but like I said in the chat earlier, my plan is not to do the interesting topics when I teach English. My plan is to do all the topics. <laughs> so, I have a gigantic list that I have where I keep adding topics uh, to the list. Uh, and this was one of the next ones. It might seem funny to do this topic in the middle of the winter but half of the people who are watching are actually experiencing summer right now. So, I'm sure you will enjoy this. Few rules before we get started. Please use only English in the chat. Please use the chat to have conversations with each other. Most of you are well aware of this and if you have a question during the lesson, please use the link that is shared in the chat. Don't ask the question in the chat. Use the link. That will go to a form that you can use to ask a question. Um but I think we should get started. Should I do one more audio check just to make sure things are working? Maybe I should. I should probably also say hi to a lot of people for a sec. So, let's real quick say hi to Julia Olis, Key Park, Sam the Taiwanese, uh Jarvis, Lolly Lolly, Sam the Taiwanese. Wait, I said hi to Sam t- twice. I know Brent from American English is here. I know Rod, Rod the Brazilian English teacher is here. Svetlana is here. Uh Prankit is here. I haven't seen Modine yet. Talk Italian with Aroni is here. Uh Elaine is here. Huao Cheng is here and now I should get the lesson started. I can't say hi to everybody. There's just too many of you. So, let's get started. Uh let me find my controls here. When you talk about the yard, you're talking about the area outside of a house. If you live in an apartment, you don't have a yard. Usually, you have a balcony but you don't have a yard. If however, you live in a house, you will have a yard. Usually, you will have a front yard. This is the yard in front of your house. So, the area from the street to your house would be called your yard. In North America, most houses have a yard. Some have small yards, some have really big yards but it's fairly normal for a house to have a yard. Um I should say that this lesson again is very North American. This is very much a Canadian and American style lesson. I'm going to be talking about things that are common in yards in Canada and in the United States. It's probably somewhat related to other English speaking countries but because I am Canadian, this will definitely be uh, very much a North American lesson. So, from your front, from the front of your house to the road or street, we would call that your front yard. Usually, your front yard, if you look at this one, has some sort of sidewalk or path leading to the front door um, but definitely, you would have a front yard. Behind your house, you will probably have a backyard. A backyard is usually a fairly private area. Sometimes, it's surrounded by a fence or hedge which I'll talk about later. A backyard usually is covered in lawn or grass. They're kind of the same thing. I'll explain more in a bit Um, but a backyard is a place that you can use in the warmer times of the year just to enjoy yourself outside. You might sit in the backyard to read a book. You might do other activities in the backyard but it's usually the area from your house to what we call the property line. When you buy a house in Canada or the United States, the edges of your place are called the property line. So, your backyard would go from your house to your property line and then you might have a neighbor across the fence. 
Um you might also have what's called a side yard. In order to talk about the areas on each side of your house, you might use the term side yard. So, in the side yard, you might have a few things like flower beds or other things. Some people don't have a side yard or don't have a very big side yard. Sometimes, the houses are so close together, there's not enough room for you to have a side yard. But sometimes, if you live in a house on a corner, you might have a front yard, a side yard and a backyard. That's kind of cool. Notice something interesting about these three words. Front yard is two words. Backyard is one word and side yard is two words. I don't know why. That's just the way English is. Um as I mentioned before, your uh yard will most likely be made up of lawn. So, lawn is simply another word for grass. So, in the backyard or front yard, you will probably have a really nice lawn. You might have things like squirrels that run around in your lawn. Um some people aren't very happy about that but uh it's just one of the things that happens when you live in North America. Uh and again, a lawn is made up of grass. So, you grow grass in order to have a lawn. Grass can come from grass seed or there's something called sod where you buy a roll of grass and you roll it out and then you water it and it grows. I should have made a slide for that but I forgot to. Sorry about that. Um when you have a lawn, you need to mow it, okay? So, quite often on Saturdays, you will hear people mowing their lawn. People will say things like, oh, I need to mow my lawn today. It's time to mow my lawn or they'll say, it hasn't rained for weeks and I don't need to mow my lawn right now because it isn't growing. Uh, but definitely, if you have a lawn, you need to mow your lawn. Uh and what do you use to mow your lawn? You would use a lawn mower. Um a lawn mower is a device with a motor that you push around and it mows your lawn. It cuts it off at a certain height. Um people in North America, some people in North America are very particular about their lawns. They want their lawns to look perfect. So, they will often mow their lawn even if it hasn't grown very much. They they just like to keep it really really neat and really really tidy. I am not one of those person people. I have far too large of a property to worry about that. We're just happy if we get the lawn mowed every week. That's enough for us to be happy. Um you might use a push mower. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. So, a push mower obviously is called a push mower because you push it, okay? You use um you pull it to start it. It's a pull start motor and then you push it in order to mow the lawn. Um if you are someone who has a large lawn, you will most likely though have a riding mower. We also call this a lawn tractor or a garden tractor. But a riding mower is a little nicer because you can sit on it and you just drive around while you mow your lawn. We mow the vast majority of our lawn with a riding mower because we live on a farm. It's just far too much lawn to mow with a push mower. We do have a push mower but for the most part, we use the riding mower to mow our lawn. Uh let's see here. Um and then we have something called a weed eater. So, a weed eater is a uh, machine that you can use to trim the lawn along your fence or along areas where it's hard to get to with a push mower or riding mower. So, people will often weed eat around trees or they'll weed eat along the fence. Some people call it a whipper snipper. I usually call it a weed eater but it's a machine with a string and it spins super fast. And then you can go along and you can trim or you can weed eat around things. I'm just curious what Brent from American English would call a weed eater. Uh whether he calls it a whipper snipper or a weed eater. There's a few names for this garden tool in English. We call it a weed eater because it eats weeds, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't actually eat them but it certainly does cut them down. Um as I mentioned, some people like to keep their lawn looking immaculate. When you keep something immaculate, it's perfect. They like their lawn to be in perfect condition. So, they will mow their lawn every week. They will fertilize their lawn two or three times a year. Fertilizer is something that you put on plants to help them grow. It's it's like a bag 
filled with nutrients we would call it. It has nitrogen and phosphate and potassium I think are the three. Um so many people who enjoy having a lush green lawn will fertilize their lawn in the spring and fall and maybe even in the summer. They might uh they might get a little carried away and uh fertilize a little too much. I don't <laughs> fertilize my lawn. I have no reason to fertilize my lawn. It grows well enough without fertilizer. So, I do not do that. Hey, let's uh let's look at a few questions. I do wanna say hi to the 341 people watching. Whenever I do a topic that I don't think will be popular, sometimes lots of people come and watch. So, welcome to all 341 of you. It is really nice to see you here. Um let me do an audio check and then I will start on the questions. Excellent. I know there are questions ready to go. I saw some earlier. Let me get the first one up on the screen. Uh while you're waiting, don't forget that uh this will be the last live lesson for a couple of weeks. I'll explain more later. Um but right now, let me get the question up. Ruslan. Hi, Ruslan says, hello, sir. It's nice to see you again. Thank you. It's nice to see you too. Is it popular in Canada to build a pool in the yard? Best wishes from Russia. So, this past year, it was very popular to build pools because we were um all stuck at home. People were looking for more activities that they could do in their yards um because we couldn't go anywhere. Um so, this year, this past year, it was actually very hard to find if you wanted to buy a pool, it was hard to find one and if you wanted to have people come and build a pool for you, there was a long waiting list. So, yes, Ruslan, the popularity of pools kind of goes up and down. There were uh, there was a time where pools weren't popular. This past year, it definitely was popular for people to buy pools for sure. Uh, Again, because um most of our pools were closed. Our public pools were closed. So, people were looking for a way um just to enjoy themselves in their yards. I think that's uh why uh, I wanted to do this topic because people have spent a lot of time in their yards over the past 10 or 12 months. Uh let's see here. Chico says, hi, Bob. Why are there no fences around yards in Canada and the USA? So, here's an interesting thing, Chico. This is what happens in our area. They will build new houses and there will be no fences between the yards, okay? People will buy the new house and then they will start to improve things in the yard. So, usually when they build, let's say they build a hundred new houses in a certain area. About five to ten years after they've built those houses, there will be fences between all the yards. One of the first things people usually do when they buy a house is they put a fence around their backyard. People do not put fences around their front yards in Canada. In general, it's just their backyards but you usually buy a home with no fence and then you usually eventually build a fence. You talk to your neighbors and you agree to build a fence. So, eventually, there are fences in most subdivisions and in most areas. Um I do wanna give a shout out. I know Brent's probably gone already from American English with this guy. Thanks for hanging out, Brent. I don't know if I missed your answer about weed eaters. Sometimes we call a weed eater a weed whacker. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Weed whacker. Thanks. Anyways, Brent, have a good day teaching. Uh catch you on the flip side. That's what that's what cool people say sometimes in English. Uh let's see here. Um Rod, the Brazilian English teacher. Hi, Rod. Mr. Bob, how are you today? I'm good, Rod. We know you live on a farm. So, you have a huge backyard. So, what do you love most in it? Have a great Friday. Thanks. I think what I like most is that I live in a place where I don't have any really close neighbors. When we lived in the city, there were people on every side of us and we didn't actually have a fence around our backyard because we rented a fairly new house. So, I think what I like most, Rod, about where I live is there's a lot of peace and quiet. I don't have any neighbors who are really close. In fact, when the neighbors over there have a party, I can hardly hear them. Um that's the way I like it. Uh Renata, I forgot to make a slide for this, Renata. I should have. Hello, Bob. I hope you are great as always. Do Canadians do yard sales? I also heard garage sale. Have a tremendous day, sir. So, yes, you are correct. 
It is called a yard sale or a garage sale. Sometimes people take things that they no longer need and they will put it on a Saturday morning, sometimes on a Friday night, out at the end of their driveway and they will put prices on it and then they will sell their used items to people and it's called a yard sale or a garage sale. They are very popular in Canada and the United States during the summer months. If you drive around any area where there are lots of houses on a Saturday morning, you will most likely find a garage sale. Let's see. Um, there we go. Good. Uh, let's see here. Just reading some of the comments. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> Let me move on. Albert says, if I live in an apartment, can I refer to a territory around the building as a yard? We generally don't. The area around an apartment building, we wouldn't call a yard. We would probably just call it the, well, we might call it the front lawn. We might call it, yeah, we might refer to it as just the lawn. We, I don't think we would call it a yard. A yard is usually something that you just found, find around a house, Albert. Let's see here. Ario says, hello, hello. I learned a new word, lawn. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you as well, Ario. That's good to hear. Uh, one new word for today for you. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Um, Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. How do junkyards operate in Canada? Thank you. So, here's another thing. I have not made a slide for junkyard. A junkyard is a place where you bring old things like used cars that don't run anymore or maybe you have an old washing machine. You would bring it to the junkyard. Henry, the way junkyards work in Canada is they only take things that are made out of metal and they pay you for it. So, I have an old truck in my driveway. I need to take the old truck to the junkyard and they will probably give me money because they will recycle the metal. Uh you can also bring them old car batteries and they will give you twenty dollars for an old car battery because they want to use the materials in it to make new batteries. So, that's how junkyards work uh, in Canada. You get paid for your metal. Um let's see here. I'm gonna skip the next one because it's not related to yards. Sorry about that. And I wonder if that's the last question on the list right now. No, it's definitely not. Let me just double check what's happening here. Oh, here we go. Um Nirana says, hi, teacher Bob. My question is, is street and yard the same thing or are there any differences? Thanks for the great lessons. So, you drive your car on the street and then the like the grass area between the street and your house is what you would call the yard or the front yard in particular. Uh let me just double check where we are here. I think we should get back to the lesson. So, in your yard, you might have what are called flower beds. So, between your lawn and your house, you might have an area where you just have soil and in that area, you might grow different plants. You might have flowering plants. You might have other plants that don't flower um but you might have an area around your house. You can kind of see it here where you have various plants that you grow just so that you have kind of um like a wild area. We don't usually have the lawn come right up to the house. We usually have an area where we have a few flower beds. Um as someone mentioned earlier, most backyards in North America will have a fence. People will build a fence around the yard. They will build the fence to have some privacy. In fact, um sorry, I'm just a little itchy there. I know that's kind of weird but um in fact, we have a certain kind of fence called a privacy fence. If you build a fence and it's higher than most people's eyes, if it's higher than that, we would call it a privacy fence. So, if it's a fence you can't see through, and it's about my height, we would call it a privacy fence. But most backyards again will have a fence at some point. Eventually, almost everyone builds a fence in their backyard. If you are really good friends with your neighbors, the people who live beside you, you might put a gate in your fence so that you can go between your yards but it really depends on whether you like your neighbors or if you don't like your neighbors. If you don't like your neighbors, you probably don't have a gate in your fence. 
Many people in their backyard will have a shed or a garden shed. You can use both terms. You could keep all of your tools, all of your gardening tools in your garden shed. You can call it a backyard shed. You can just call it a shed but a shed is a small building that you have usually in your backyard where you just keep some things that you don't want to keep in your house. You might keep your lawnmower in your shed. You might keep uh, your shovel and your rake in your shed. I'll talk about those in a little bit but many, many people will have a garden shed. In fact, when people buy a house, they usually build a fence and then they usually build a garden shed. Um those are two very popular things to uh, have in your yard once you buy a house. Uh some people but not everyone will have a garden or what we would call a vegetable garden. Not very many people have vegetable gardens anymore. Many people will have flower beds like I mentioned earlier. Around the front of their house, they'll have flower beds or we just call them beds. You know, I'm gonna plant this in the bed on the side of the house but some people still have a large garden. My grandfather on my father's side of the family had a large vegetable garden at his house. I remember when we visited when I was a child, he grew so much food. We got lots of beans from him. We got lots of lettuce from him. We got a lot of vegetables from my grandfather. Again, my grandfather on my father's side. I'm not sure if you're aware of how that works. So, when you talk about your grandparents, you refer to your grandparents on your mother's side or your grandparents on your father's side. That's how you indicate which set of grandparents you're talking about. So, my grandfather on my father's side had a large vegetable garden. Um instead of a fence, you might have a hedge around your yard. So, a hedge is basically the same as a fence but it's made out of plants. So, you can see here they have grown plants and those plants act as a barrier between in this case, the road and the person's yard. Um so, instead of a fence, you might actually plant a hedge. Sometimes, we call it a hedgerow. It takes a few years to grow but at a certain point, you will have a living fence. That might be a nice way to say it. Um you will have a fence that's made out of plants. Let me just check. I'm gonna talk about a hedge trimmer a little bit later because you do have to trim a hedge if you have a hedge. Um if you have children, there are a few things you will probably have in your yard because you have children or maybe if you have grandchildren. Um one of the things you might have is a sandbox. So, a sandbox is something that's made out of wood and people actually go and buy sand and they fill it with sand. The sand is similar to the sand that you would have at the beach. It's a very fine sand and it's just an area for children to play. Usually for really, really young children. Um so, really young children um sometimes will have a sandbox in their backyard and they they'll play in the sandbox with the same toys you would use at the beach. They usually have a little shovel and they have a pail. You can see the pail way over there and then they will have just toys that they use in their sandbox. So, many uh families with young children will build a sandbox in their backyard and fill it with sand so that uh the children can play in it. We had a sandbox when our kids were younger. Um it's kind of in disrepair now. I should probably take it apart. Um because it it doesn't look very good. I'll show you in a video sometime our sandbox. If you're lucky and you have a really big tree and your parents are in industrious people, they might build you a tree house. My kids never had a tree house. We have lots of large trees but I never built a tree house for our kids but a tree house is a small house built in a tree So, up off the ground, you build a little tiny house. It's more like a shed but we do call it a tree house. Um and it's for kids to play in. So, if you have large trees and if your mom or dad takes the time, you might have a tree house as a kid. Um that would be really fun. I feel bad that I never built a tree house for my kids but I know we have lots of trees but we don't have a lot of really, really big trees on our property. I don't know if you've noticed that in the videos. Um 
you might also have a playhouse. I don't have a slide for this. A playhouse is similar to a shed but it's designed for kids to play in. It might be like a really small house in the backyard. You might have a small playhouse and you might have what's called a swing. A swing is something that you hang from a large tree and you can sit on it and you can swing back and forth. Sometimes you will have someone push you on the swing. When we took our kids to the playground when they were young, they would go on the swing and then uh, Jen or I would push them on the swing and they would have a fun time swinging. You might have what's called a swing set. Let me make this a bit bigger. So, this is a swing. It hangs from a tree but you might also have a swing set. A swing set is something that parents can buy that kids can go on. You'll often see swing sets at the park. If you go to the park, they'll have really, really big swing sets but a swing set is similar to a swing. It's something that children can sit on and then they can swing back and forth and they could just enjoy themselves outside. Um some tools. Let's do a few tools and then I will get to some questions. I think I can make these big. A shovel is something that a lot of people have. If they need to dig a hole somewhere in their yard um or if they just need to move some sand or some soil, they will have a shovel. There are many different kinds of shovels. We have this kind of shovel. I think you saw it in the thumbnail. You might have a rake. This rake in particular is used quite often to rake leaves. Often in the fall, people living in the city, if they own a house, will need to go outside and rake leaves in Canada. There are a lot of leaves on the ground in the fall and someone needs to rake them up. So, notice something interesting here. You can shovel with a shovel. So, it's a noun and a verb, right? I need to go shovel some dirt. I need to shovel some dirt. I need to use a shovel to shovel some dirt. I just bang my microphone. When you use a rake, you rake things. So, you would rake leaves with a rake. Very often in uh, English, we make verbs out of nouns. So, that's a case where we do that as well. Um a hedge trimmer is used to trim a hedge. I think we looked at the hedge a few slides ago. When you have a hedge which is a living barrier, just let me have a drink here for a sec, which is a living barrier, you need to trim it sometimes once or twice a year and you would use a hedge trimmer. So, you would trim the hedge with a trimmer, a hedge trimmer. This is an electric one. So, this one probably runs off batteries. If I was needing to trim a hedge, I would want to use one that uh, ran off batteries. I wouldn't want to use one that was hand powered. Uh, let me get to the next one. Pruners. If you have small trees or maybe some fruit trees in your backyard or if you have flowers that you like to cut to make bouquets, you would have pruners. So, if you needed to go cut a few flowers, you would use pruners um, and it always has an S on the end. It's like scissors. So, you use, you would say, where are the pruners? I need to get a pair of pruners. Um it, so, it works the same as scissors. Hopefully, that made some sense. Uh and then you probably will have a watering can if you need to water some plants in your backyard. Uh maybe you have flower beds and you need to bring water because the plants need to be watered. You would use a watering can to water the plants. Notice I'm trying to use the words and give you example sentences. So, you would say, the plants in the flower bed in the side yard need water. I'm going to get the watering can and go water them, okay? So, you're you're getting some good examples hopefully of the sentences you could use. You might also have a hose or a garden hose. We use both terms. A garden hose is a small hose that you can hook up to a tap and then you can turn the tap on and water comes out the other end. Uh, you could hook the garden hose up to a sprinkler if you wanted to water your lawn. So, um let me back up here. Oh, wait. No, I have two more. You might also have gardening gloves. Maybe you don't want to get sore hands when you're uh, working in the flower beds or the garden. So, you might have gloves that you wear. Generally, gardening gloves, these look worn out. These are well-worn <laughs> gardening gloves. Um but you probably would put gardening gloves on if you were to work in the garden just so your hands don't get sore or worn. And then you will most likely have 
a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow is a one-wheeled uh, machine that you can use to move things easily around your yard. Um, let's do some questions but before we do, let me make one small change. Um, I gotta be honest, I'm totally shocked that there's so many people watching. I thought a lesson about the yard would it be very interesting but I've I've been proven wrong. <laughs> so, thank you so much to the 507 people watching. We're just gonna take a moment uh where I'm going to answer questions and I'm also going to answer questions from my members. Members are people who have clicked the join button. Don't have yard sales because we live too far away from the city. We did once have a yard sale with my sister. So, we got together with my sister and we had a yard sale. Um and is it true that is it beneficial for the buyers? Yes. Usually when you go to a yard sale, things are really cheap. Yard sales are a great place to buy things if you don't mind buying things that are used, okay? Obviously, there's nothing new at a garage sale or yard sale. There are many used items. Um and yes, some people do give stuff away at the end, okay? Um not everyone but generally, if you go early, you can find really good stuff. If you go late, you might be able to find stuff for free. Let's see here. Julie Oli's high teacher. If I say there there is a lot of space in the yard, should I use space or place or room? What is the difference between these three? So, there's a lot of space in the yard. We have a lot of space. I would use space. Yeah. This my our backyard, there's just lots of room in our backyard. Yeah, you can use both. Let's have the party at my place. I have a huge backyard. There's lots of room to have a party. Yeah, use that. There's lots of space to have a party. So, you can use both definitely. Great question, Julia. Uh let's see here. Um Lolly Lolly, bonjour Bob. Are you growing some fruits? No. Um so, Lolly, we have the wrong kind of soil to grow fruit. So, it's kind of sad because I would love to grow some fruit um but uh we can't. We could grow apples I think but we don't have an apple tree. Alexi says in Vancouver, I have seen many hedges in in front of the yard. Some of them were incredible. So, some hedges are just plain like they're just square but some people will trim their hedge to be very uh just cool to look at. So, I wonder if that's what Alexi is mentioning. Just some really interesting hedges in people's yards. Sam the Taiwanese. Hi, teacher Bob. How are you today? I'm good. I'm wondering, is it legal to build an extra building in the yard or it requires some permission from the government? So, you may build a shed as long as it's only, let me see here. I think it can be 10 feet wide and 10 feet long. So, you can build a shed that's 100 square feet. I don't know what that is in meters. If you want to build something bigger, you need to get a building permit from the government. Great question, Sam. Uh Annette says, Bob, can we use the word garden instead of backyard without speaking about growing vegetables? Yeah, you could because some people will have a patio and they'll have some gardens and they'll say, well, let's go sit in the garden and have a cup of tea. So, depending on what it looks like, If you have an area where you have some stone and you have some plants and you have some chairs to sit in, you might call it your garden. You might say, oh, let's go to the, you might even call it a sitting garden. So, you might have an area that's just really nicely made um and just looks really cool and you would call that a garden as well. Key Park, I've been living in an apartment, never have a yard. I know that's the sad thing about living in an apartment but Key Park, You don't have to do any yard work on Saturdays. So, yard work is work you do in your yard. You don't ever have to do that. So, there is a slight benefit to not having a yard. Lolly Lolly says, "Ah, okay, thanks, Bob. No problem. Julia Olise, thank you, dear teacher. I always had doubts about them. No problem. Rod says, oh, he's talking to Arone. And yes, have a conversation, guys. Awesome. Let me get to the next question. Um okay, Natalia. Is it possible to have animals or birds, sheep, cows, horses, chickens, etc., in a in a barn in backyard in Canada? You need permission for this. And what about wild animals? So, in most cities and towns, you cannot have farm animals in your backyard. You cannot have sheep or cows or horses. In some towns and cities, you can have chickens, 
and sometimes there's a law like you can have up to three chickens. In some cities and towns, you can't have any animals. You can have maybe a dog or cat but you can't have what we would call farm animals. So, it really just depends, Natalia, on where you live. That's a great question, by the way. When you move out into the country, you're usually allowed to have whatever animals you want. So, um, people sometimes buy a small place out in the country so that they can have a horse or some sheep for sure. Uh, let's see here. Sia Wu says, when I was young, I used to play in the yard of my grandma's house. It's good memories. Thanks, Bob. That's awesome, Siwoo. Yes. Playing in the yard is a, something quite common when kids visit grandparents. They usually play in the yard um because if they're all in the house, it gets crazy, I think. Uh Annette Manzi says, thanks, teacher Bob. No problem. Julia Olis says, I think having a yard is for millionaires. All the tools are so expensive. You know, there's something to be said about it's simpler to just live in an apartment like I mentioned to Key Park earlier. There is a cost to having a yard. Many new homes in Canada have very small yards. The houses are getting bigger and the yards are getting smaller because people don't want to spend a lot of money on their yards. So, that's just how things are changing right now. Thanks, Julia for that comment. Uh comment good uh from a member whose name I can't read but thank you for being a member and saying good. Rod says, Mr. Bob, do you have any intentions to grow anything other than flowers eventually? You know, here's a funny thing, Rod. 10 or 15 years ago, we thought maybe we should grow Christmas trees and we decided not to. Um and then this year, there's a shortage of Christmas trees. So, it would have been a good idea uh but we didn't end up doing it. We probably should have. It would have been a good thing to do. Uh Norma. Hi, Norma. Good to see you. Uh good morning, Bob and all in the chat. Very late for me. Good to see you here though, Norma. Um let me get to the next question. Annette from Quebec. Hello, Bob. What do you call the yard for a school? I'm just a little correction there, Annette. Uh we would call it the playground or the yeah, would we call it the play yard? Not really. We would call it the playground. Yeah, definitely. When students in a school have recess, so they have class and then when they are allowed to go outside, it's called recess. They would go and play in the schoolyard or they would play in the on the playground. So, we do say schoolyard. Okay, good. I, I'm glad that came out of my brain. So, yes, you would call it the schoolyard or the playground. Uh you probably can use both interchangeably. Um I'm glad I used an example sentence where the word schoolyard accidentally came out. That's the best way to teach English is just try to use phrases and see what words come out. Uh let's see here. Um I'm gonna skip the next one because it's not about yards. Sorry about that. And the next one as well. Let's see here. From Myrta, do you have to sweep your pavement? So, some people will have a gravel driveway. So, where they drive their car on their property, it's a it's called their driveway and it's made out of small stones but some people will have a paved driveway where it's like a road and then they will sweep that every week. Yes, they will sweep off their driveway. Uh let's see here. Avgeni says, good morning, Sir Bob. Nice to see you. Some houses in a Russian village have a well for receiving water. I'm interested about this thing in Canada. Is there the same well in Canadian yards? No, it's been a long time since people have had wells, okay? Even Jen and I don't have a well. If you live in a town or city, you have what's called city water. So, you get water directly from the city. There's a pipe underground. Um out in the country, some people have wells but not like the old kind of well. Um they have a just a pipe in the ground with an electric pump. Um Jen and I have a cistern. So, we have a large concrete tank um and rainwater goes in it and that's where we get our water from. Uh let's see here. Alex says, hello, Prof. Bob. Awesome topic. I really like spending time in the yard and thanks. I've learned many new words with you. Yards can be very nice places to be. If you have even a small yard, you can go out to get some fresh air. You can go out to read. You can go out to just sit and watch the birds if there are some birds in your yard Um, but definitely, Alex, I would agree. Um spending time in the yard is always a relaxing and enjoyable experience. 
uh, for sure. Let me get to the next question. Ha, Alex. Alex says, hi, Bob. Thank you for meeting with us live on YouTube. No problem, Alex. This is one of the most enjoyable things I do every week. Why is a building, oh, why is the police building in England called Scotland Yard? Thank you. I'm not sure why. But uh, often if you watch a police TV show, like a d- police drama, they'll, they'll go to Scotland Yard if they're investigating something. I don't know why they call it a yard, Alice. That is very interesting. Um, I'll have to look that up. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mabubi says, hello, Bob. What is the difference between courtyard, courtyard, patio, terrace, and backyard? So, a backyard is a large area and it usually has lawn. A patio is an area that's covered in stone or other material where you can sit. A terrace is usually raised a little bit and a courtyard is a an area between buildings. So, not the greatest explanation but hopefully that made just a little bit of sense for you. Give me one moment here. I'm going to disable the members only chat. So, we're into normal chat mode again. I just wanna do a quick thank you to all my members who have clicked the join button at some point in the past and support me on this channel. You guys are awesome. Before we go back to the lesson, one small announcement. I am going to put be putting out videos for the next two weeks but I am not doing live streams next week or the week after. I'm taking a two week break from live streams for Christmas. Generally, during Christmas, people are busy anyways but what I am planning to do is I will put out some edited versions of past live streams and I have a few new videos coming out over the next two weeks but I'm gonna finish this live stream today. I am doing a live stream tomorrow and then for the Christmas weekend and the New Year's weekend, the next two weekends, I am going to take a little bit of a break. It's getting really bright in here. Let me just see. Ooh, that's not good. Just adjusting my light. So, little break coming up. I'm sure you'll be okay. I'll be back in January with more live lessons again. Uh, let's get back to the lesson though. Shrubs. So, I mentioned flower beds. You might grow flowers in your flower beds. You might grow other things like shrubs in your flower beds. Shrubs are like really small trees and they are they don't grow very big or you might trim them with a hedge trimmer but this would be a classic example of what shrubs look like. They are very very small woody plants Um, that you would grow in your flower beds. You might also grow perennials in your flower beds. Perennials are a type of flower that grows every year and flowers every year. So, in places like where I live in the summer, they would just grow and bloom. In the winter, they would be under the snow and the next year, they would just grow again. That's different than annuals. Annuals are flowering plants that you need to start from seed every year. So, let me repeat. Perennials just come back every year. You don't have to do anything uh, and they just bloom and they're beautiful. Annuals, you need to actually start from seed every year in your flower bed and then they will grow. Um, most yards, front yards and side yards will have some sort of walkway or path, okay? We wouldn't call it a sidewalk, okay? I know it seems like it looks a bit like a sidewalk. Uh, We wouldn't call it a sidewalk but you would have a walkway or a path or a pathway that leads maybe through your backyard to your garden shed. Maybe it leads from your house to the sidewalk in front of your house but you will most likely have some kind of walkway. You will probably have a bench somewhere. Some of you know that if you watch my other YouTube channel, a lot of times I'm sitting on my bench teaching a short English lesson. So, many people will have a bench in their yard. Um, You can call it a garden bench. You can just call it a bench. If it was in a park, you would call it a park bench but if it's in your yard, you would just call it a bench or a garden bench. Annette says, it's difficult to pronounce perennial. Yeah, let's go back. Perennial. So, we grow a lot of perennials. We have many perennials. There you go. And then we have a lot of annuals as well. Hopefully, that helped in it. Um let me see. I gotta see where I am here in the lesson. Uh some people will have a small pond in their backyard 
and you might call it a fish pond. You might just call it a pond. So, they will actually use a shovel to dig a hole in the ground and they will create a place that they can fill with water and then they will put some fish in it. Usually, goldfish. That is one of the most popular types of fish and they will dig the pond deep enough so that it doesn't freeze in the winter and then the goldfish can live there year round. So, I don't have a pond in my backyard. Um some people uh if they really like something like that, they will build. They will build a pond. I'm having trouble talking. I don't know why. Um some people dry their clothes after they wash their clothes in the washing machine. They will have a machine called a dryer. So, they will wash their clothes in the washing machine and then they will throw the clothes in the dryer and then they will dry their clothes. Some people have a clothesline. Let me repeat that so you can hear the pronunciation. A clothesline. A clothesline is a long cable outside or a long piece of wire or rope that you hang clothes on with clothespins. Those little wooden things there are called clothespins so that your clothes can dry outside. So, you would wash your clothes in a washing machine and then you would hang your clothes on the clothesline to dry. We don't use a clothesline. We actually have what are called drying racks. So, we wash our clothes. We hang them on the drying rack and then we put them outside. That's how we dry our clothes. Um some people might have a pool. We don't have a pool but as was mentioned earlier in the lesson, pools were a very popular thing to build this past year. Many people built a pool in their backyard because we weren't able to go anywhere for the last 10 months and the summer was really really hot. So, some people might have a pool in their backyard. Rod says he's taken two weeks off as well. That's a good plan, Rod. Um when I take two weeks off though, I I just work a little bit less. I don't stop working completely. So, I'm still gonna put out about five videos but uh we'll see how that goes. Um if you have little children, really really small children, you might have a kiddie pool. A kiddie pool is a very very tiny pool that you just fill up and then kids can play in it and enjoy uh cooling off a little bit on a hot summer day. If you have a dog, you will most likely have a dog house in your backyard. Um Oscar has a dog house but he never uses it. <laughs> so, a dog house is a small house that you build for your dog so that your dog has a place uh just to sit in the summer if it gets hot uh and to just be outside. So, if you have a dog, you will most likely have a dog house outside. I always think it's funny because I built Oscar a really nice dog house. Uh it's actually an insulated dog house. So, it's even warm in the winter uh and he never uses it. He's not he doesn't really like it. He likes being in the real house with us. He doesn't like being in the dog house. Uh let's see here. Um you might have a patio. So, again, there's a slight difference between a deck and a patio. A patio is at ground level and it's usually made out of flat stones or concrete, okay? So, a patio is usually outside a house between the side the door of the house and the lawn. You might have a patio. You might have patio furniture. So, the chairs and table here we would say we would call that patio furniture and it's just a nice place to sit outside in the summer. Many homes in Canada have a patio or they might have a deck. A deck is usually made out of wood and it's usually raised off the ground. So, a deck is usually a little bit higher than the lawn. Uh, and it's usually made out of wood. So, those are the two differences. Um I think an equal amount of houses in North America have either a patio or a deck. Um and then on the deck, many people will have a barbecue. Just a nice place where they can cook some things uh where they can uh barbecue in the summer and just enjoy being outside. I think I'm almost done actually. That surprised me. Um time flies when you're having fun. (laughs) Uh you might in your backyard have a picnic table. Many of you have seen my picnic table. It's quite old. Uh I think I should build a new one because the picnic table is getting it's starting to fall apart a little bit. It's been many many years. Uh I think it might be time to build a new picnic table but many people in their yard in their backyard, 
they will have a picnic table so that they can go and sit and eat outside. And then many people uh, will have lawn chairs. A lawn chair is a foldable chair that's easy to take with you when you go places. When we visit family in the summer, we take our lawn chairs because we often sit in the backyard. So, it's very common to just have lawn chairs. In our family, Jen and I and all the kids, we each have a lawn chair. So, when we go to visit Jen's sister, we will put all the lawn chairs in the van. When we get there, we will take our lawn chairs out and we will open them up and we will sit in the backyard on our lawn chair. When we're done visiting, we'll fold up our lawn chair and we'll go home again. So, a lawn chair is a very common type of chair to have and there's many kinds of lawn chairs. Um and then you might have a birdhouse. This birdhouse is a little bit covered in snow uh but in your backyard if you are someone who enjoys wildlife and in particular if you really like birds, you might have a birdhouse. A birdhouse again is um a small house usually with a hole in it and the hole is usually the right size for a certain kind of bird. Um and then you might have birds. I didn't make a slide for bird feeder. You might also have a bird feeder in your backyard that birds can come and they can eat bird food. Bird food? Bird bird. That's weird. Hey Jen, what do you call bird bird feed? Bird seed? What what do you call it? Yeah, I'm not an ex I'm not an expert so I had to ask Jen. Uh it If you have a bird feeder, I think you put bird seed in it but I should check that one. Maybe look it up. I'm obviously not a bird feeder expert but you might have a small bird feeder that you hang from a tree and uh you might fill it with bird feed or bird seed. Check check that one because I'm not 100% sure. Um I'm going to answer questions for the rest of the lesson. We are done with the slides so if you were just here for the slides, Uh we're gonna move now into question time and I'll just wrap this up with all the questions. I do wanna say though uh, as I find the next question, uh it's awesome to see all of you here. Um 544 people watching. That's awesome. If you're new here, you should subscribe. There's a red button there. It's right here. Let me try to there's a red button right here. You should click it uh and then you'd be a subscriber. It's free. Katerina says, hello teacher Bob. Is it cheap or expensive to have your own pool or a small lake in Canada. Have a warm Friday evening. It's expensive to have a pool. Jen and I have often talked about putting up a pool in the backyard um but it's usually the cost that stops us. It's a few thousand dollars to buy a pool uh and it can and obviously it can cost even more than that. So, we've never bought a pool because of the cost. It's it's quite pricey actually. Um Let's see. Cornelia, hello, Bob. Describe, please, the yard of your dream. Well, the yard of my dream, like the best yard in the world, would have lots of big trees and lots of shade. Those are, I don't like really hot weather. If I'm outside and it's over 30 degrees Celsius, I like to be in the shade under a tree. Um, I was asking Rod earlier, uh, Rod, the Brazilian English teacher, I said, it's minus eight here. And Rod's in Brazil. I said, what is it there? And he said, it's 27 degrees Celsius, I think. It's probably gonna be warmer later today there. Um if I was in Brazil and if I had a house, I would want my yard to have lots of trees for sure. Let's see here. Um Hung says, hello, teacher Bob. Do you have maple trees in your yard or in your garden? What is your favorite tree? Thank you. Yes, we have lots of maple trees on our property and I think that is one of my favorite trees. I don't ha- think I have a single most favorite tree. I might have mentioned in a video that maple trees were my favorite tree but I do like pine and spruce and fir as well because they're green year round um but definitely big maple trees are one of my favorite trees. They're just awesome. Uh let's see. Sita says, Mr. Bob, I was born in the countryside. Many of these vocabularies match the vocabulary needed to talk about life in the countryside. Thanks a lot for that. Well, no problem, Sita. I do my best to uh make things as relevant as possible. When something's relevant, it means it's useful and happy. Uh let's see here. Oh, Rodolfo. What happens in the winter with the water connections? Well, Rodolfo, most water lines in Canada are more than a meter underground. 
and it does not freeze that low. We have taps on the outside of our houses that are they the mechanism is inside the house. So, even though you turn it on outside, the mechanism is inside. So, the tap won't freeze in the winter and we bring all of our garden hoses in in the winter and don't use them. So, number one, most pipes like when you get water from the city, the pipe from the city is underground far enough that it does not freeze. (coughs) Excuse me. Sachin, I have no yard. I am so sad but Sachin, You don't have to mow the lawn. You don't have to spend money. You can go to the park. I know it's it is nice to have a yard but there are advantages to not having a yard as well. Let's see here. Eric says, I have a front yard facing the driveway next to the carport and an enclosed backyard garden where can be assessed accessed from the garage. I think I'm gonna change that a bit. Does this sentence sound right? So, here let me read it again. I have a front yard facing the driveway next to the carport and an enclosed backyard garden that can be accessed from the garage. I think that's what you're trying to say, Eric. That sounds really cool actually. Um hope you're having a good day down there in Melbourne. I would love to visit Australia someday. Let's see here. Elaine says, hi, teacher Bob. How to say animal house in the yard like the house for pigs and cows. Generally, we would call that a barn although you could have a small shed. Okay. So, if you have two pigs, you might have a small shed that the pigs live in. If you have a horse, you might have a small shed. If you have more animals and if you have a really big building, we would call that a barn. Let's see here. Um Andrew, what's more common name? What is the more common name for it? Shrub scrub or bush. So, not scrub. We wouldn't say scrub but you would plant small shrubs or small bushes in your flower bed. We would use both. Um they kind of refer to slightly different things. Shrubs are usually small evergreens. So, plants that stay green year round and bushes are usually plants where the leaves fall off in the winter but they're both small plants that you would plant in your garden. Uh let's see here. Let me just check something. The last question does not have to do with yards but I'll answer it and then we'll wrap this up. What's the difference between rookies and newbies? Rookies and newbies are the same. They are people who are new at something. If you have never played hockey before, you would be a rookie. Well, that's not true. A rookie is someone who's new to the team. A newbie is someone who is just starting something. So, there is a slight difference between those two but anyways, let's go to this slide. Let me say a few things. First of all, There will be a live stream tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh tomorrow is December 19th. I will be doing a live stream. You can ask me any questions you want. There is no topic. Secondly, just to remind you once again, next weekend in seven days, there is no live stream on the Friday, no live stream on the Saturday. It's Christmas. Just enjoy your Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. Two weeks from now, It is actually New Year's Eve, New Year's Day on the weekend. There is no live stream on the Friday, no live stream on the Saturday as well. So, I'm taking two weeks off from live streams but there will be videos or edited versions of videos, English lessons coming out over the next two weeks. I'll tell you more about that uh, when the time comes but for now, thank you so much for being here for this lesson about the yard. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, It was fun to do. I do wanna say thank you once again to all of my members. You guys are awesome Uh, and I just wanna give a shout out to Todd and Dave who are here moderating the chat. Actually, I didn't even check if they were both here. I think they're both here. They said they were both gonna be here. I'll just trust that they were. It shows how much I pay attention. Thanks to Brent from American English with this guy who was here at the beginning. Thanks to Rod, the Brazilian English teacher who is here as well Uh, and just have a good weekend. Um, I gotta head off to work. For some reason, the phone was ringing. I hope it's nothing important. I'll check that in a minute. Anyways, live stream tomorrow. You should come 11 a.m. I'll see you then. Bye.